It goes without saying that 2023 was a huge year for wrestling. Sasha Banks leaves WWE and joins the New Japan Pro Wrestling roster at Wrestle Kingdom 17. Endeavor acquiring WWE and forming TKO alongside UFC. CM Punk returning to AEW, then getting fired by AEW, then returning to WWE all in the same calendar year. And that's just the big stories that happened. The wrestling that happens is what we're going to talk about today. Let's not waste any more time. This is the top 25 matches of 2023. Thank you guys for watching. Comment down below. What does your list look like? Let's get into it. This match comes one month fresh of Mercedes Monet making her New Japan Pro Wrestling debut at Wrestle Kingdom 17, laying out Kyrie Hojo and staking her claim to be the next rising star in what looked to be New Japan's women's division. Sasha Banks, who left WWE in late 2022, now reprising her role under the former independent name Mercedes, is now thrusted into a new setting for the first time ever. Not only did she hold her own, but she excelled in this moment putting on one of the best female performances of 2023, not just in this match, but multiple times throughout the year. It should be interesting to see what 2024 has in store for the Monet maker. It's insane the amount of wrestling fans who still do not know of Ilya Dragunov due to him being on the NXT brand. The man is without question the most passionate performer in the wrestling business, and sometimes I question if he knows if wrestling is fake or not. While Dijak delivers brutal offense that will make any man wince, this match's primary draw revolves around Ilya's exceptional acting abilities, his capacity to convey the story of suffering, anguish, and victory solely through his body language and facial expressions. Ilya taking any of the chops, chair shots, clubbing blows, or throws he dishes out stands at a level that rivals or perhaps even surpasses the talents of Kenny Omega and MJF. While not high on this list, will go down as one of the top three performances of 2023. While many still critique Charlotte Flair's card placement and oftentimes very hot shot at title wins, there's no denying that when she's at the top of her game, Charlotte is one of the gold standards of WWE women's wrestling. In this match, she goes toe to toe with Rhea Ripley, a completely different woman than the one she faced at WrestleMania 36. I spoke on Ilya Dragunov being top three performers of 2023 in the last listing, while Rhea Ripley has definitely earned a spot in the top 10. Her selling of offense is top tier, and execution of moves is what drives and pulls some of the best out of her opponents. This match evokes the best of what both wrestlers can offer and in my opinion, delivers WWE's best women's match all year. There was a lot of anticipation surrounding Noah the New Year 2023 once active WWE superstar Shinsuke Nakamura was announced for the show. And while Nakamura and the Great Buta put on the best match they could, the match that stood out the most on the show was Kaito Kiyomiya versus Keno. Everyone loves to praise strong style Japanese wrestling and speak on the glory days of Shinsuke Nakamura in his last NJPW run before signing with WWE in 2016. Well, if there's any wrestler that could be seen as the spiritual successor, it's Keno. One of the stiffest strikers in the game who matched up with Noah's star babyface and future in Kaito Kiyomiya. Bringing the fans a great match and an insanely gnarly top rope brainbuster spot that I thought for sure killed Kaito. It's a match that deserves a rewatch for sure. If there was one award for most slept on match of the year, it goes without question that Brian Danielson versus Roosh from the February 8th edition of AEW Dynamite takes the trophy. Roosh is an AEW wrestler we don't get to see very often, so at times it could be easy to forget how brazen and energy this man can be. The match immediately starts with him pouncing at Danielson and unleashing a fury of stiff strikes to the dragon. Danielson being the tremendous and versatile wrestler that he is, takes it all in stride, puts it back out at sparing doses, all while giving Roosh 
the room to excel. While the storyline between MJF and Brian Danielson at the time rendered the match outcome predictable, I don't think anybody foresaw this match being at the caliber it performed. Undoubtedly one of the best TV matches of 2023. The biggest crime Tony Khan committed in 2023 was not firing CM Punk. It was keeping Athena on the Ring of Honor brand for the entire duration of the year. Only appearing on AEW television once, you would have no clue that her and Willow Nightingale put on a barn burner of a match in July of this year. Athena keeping the brutal and sadistic nature of her character throughout this match against the happy-go-lucky personality type in Willow Nightingale was a perfect yin and yang battle. The two women battled it out with brute force and power throws from both sides of the fence, keeping a very even pacing. And while only one of these women would come out the victor, both of them won that night. Black folk don't did it again, man. What can I say? The first of many Will Ospreay exhibitions you will find on this list kicks off with one of his later bouts of 2023 and perhaps his most critically acclaimed match of the year against Shota Umino at NJPW Power Struggle. With a 40 minute runtime, Will Ospreay and Shota Umino pull out an emotional roller coaster that tells the tale of Umino blossoming into the performer he was always destined to be, and Will Ospreay being the one to reel it out of him. Shota's babyface work improves as the match progresses, and Will Ospreay is amazing as always. And while I don't quite think this is the magnum opus some are claiming it is, it's a superb piece of Japanese wrestling that I believe deserves at least one watch from anyone who has yet to experience it. Much like last year, NXT's Iron Survivor Challenge makes an 11th hour entry in this year's list of remarkable matches. NXT takes the old WWE concept of the championship scramble and turns it into a vibrant and masterful ensemble of hitters in one match. Dijak runs wild in this match, using his power, strength, and speed to his advantage. Tyler Bate takes the strategic route and picks his moments while remaining his true self. Braun Breaker enters this match like a freight train, mowing down three men in the span of 30 seconds and retaining that energy down to the last minute. And Trick Williams dives into this match like a man on a mission and emerges the man with the most hype surrounding him. The ability to take five men with so many differing styles and make magic is why Shawn Michaels is one of the best bookers doing it today, man. Hats off to all the men involved. They all ate well that night, just as much as the fans did. A match and ongoing feud that didn't get much coverage this year due to the nature of where it takes place is truly upsetting. But fear not, Joshi fans. If nobody got stardom, I got stardom. Azumi and Starlight Kid put on a match of the year candidate last year, so when it became inevitable that these two might meet again this year, you knew it was going to be a classic, and that it was. These two women started their wrestling career at the age of 12, now 21 and 22, are technically veterans in the business, as displayed through their untouchable speed, varied use of submission, and counter wrestling. You give these two women time, and they will outperform just about any man in their 30s. It's hard to compete with Azumi and Starlight Kid. Stardom better hold on tight to them, because if Triple H or Tony Khan gets a hold of them, I fear American women's wrestling may never be the same again. And I mean that in a good way. You may struggle finding many men who had a better title run year than Orange Cassidy as AEW International Champion. Week after week putting on good title defenses and basically creating an aura around a championship that for the most part was considered an unnecessary addition to All Elite Wrestling now becoming a number two title in the company. And there in comes John Moxley, former three-time AEW World Champion and a man who has never once dipped below that title picture, now gunning after the international championship. This match immediately became a huge deal as it raised the stock of not only both the title, but Arj Cassidy as a performer. And when the match came to be, it was an excellent blood-soaked skirmish. Cassidy showed how valiant of a hero he can be in this match, and in defeat came out a winner in the eyes of every fan that night.
A match that took place on the same show as Azumi vs Starlight Kid is yet another beautiful fight that also received little to no coverage in the States. Sayaka Matani and Hazuki brings forth another high-speed classic from the Stardom Triangle Derby Finals. Stardom tends to follow their own type of epic style when it comes to championship matches, and though they can be redundant in their execution at times, the passion and drive both women put out in this match made it all the more worth the 20 plus minutes they were given. In my opinion, the best women's match of the year. I'm very much convinced that at least once a year, Will Ospreay and Zack Sabre Jr. meet for a cup of tea and have a conversation that goes something like this. Say bruv, should we meet our quota of having a match of the year candidate with one another? Crikey mate! <laughs> Crikey mate! That sounds about right! However, we shall bear this annual commencement in Europe. I fear the Americans shan't experience our superior wrestling, for they bear too much in-ring illiteracy to comprehend. And Japan has received our blessing in the years of last. I concur, bruv. Onward we go. Yep, if you've seen one of their matches, I'm not gonna lie to you, they kinda run together, but each and every time, it's magnificent work in mat wrestling meets high flying with Will Ospreay's new inclusion of his heavyweight style. It's masterful work and worth checking out. It's not often you find high praise for trios matches. They are often used as plot devices and exhibitions to advance a storyline, but this match was just a battle of attrition. Three of New Japan's best in Kazuchika Okada, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Tomohiro Ishii defending their never open weight six man tag team titles against two of AEW's best in John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli, joined by New Japan prodigy and illegitimate son of John Moxley, Shota Umino. In a match where everyone shined bright, got their dream matchups or revisits, these six Grace fans alike with a beautiful bliss of tag team wrestling. It's a match that doesn't get talked about enough, but again, if no one gives it flowers, I will. Three hours after the release of CM Punk, AEW is put in a tough spot. They have to go on air, live, for AEW Collision and announce that they parted ways with their biggest attraction. Putting Ricky Starks, the man set to face CM Punk at AEW All Out, in a very shitty position. Enter Brian Danielson stepping up to the plate in less than a day's notice. On crunch time, these two men went out there and put on a crimson classic. With some of the loudest leather to skin whips I've heard in real time, and Ricky Starks putting on a career defining performance, this match stands the test of time as, in my opinion, the best strap match in modern wrestling history. The three year long story of the bloodline came to its peak in 2022 when Sami Zayn was finally accepted into the faction. The relationship of Sami Zayn and Jey Uso being one of the more captivating storylines in WWE. When Sami Zayn finally broke apart from the bloodline and began teaming with best friend Kevin Owens, you knew it was inevitable these two teams would cross paths again. And that they did, in the main event of WrestleMania 39 no less. And let me tell you, this match had it all. Great in-ring psychology top tier tag team cohesion, and drama at an all time high. They had the crowd on the edge of their seat for every near fall. And though it was becoming overzealous at a point, the conclusion to this match was a masterful storybook ending to Sami Zayn's arc in the bloodline. Will Ospreay epics have become the norm in years past. With him adapting Kazuchika Okada's main event style into his own, it's not uncommon to see Osprey matches going 30 plus minutes with often 10 minutes of pacing and an additional 10 minutes of spot trading. Speedball Mike Bailey slices through a lot of Osprey's opening sequences again straight into the meat and potatoes. Cracking Osprey's chest in with heavy taekwondo kicks and leaping over him with moonsaults and shooting stars, Osprey wouldn't have the time to feel his opponent out. They went straight into the action and within 10 minutes, everyone was on their feet waiting for the next pin that could end the match. I flew all the way to Chicago to see this match in person and was not disappointed. 
a phenomenal send-off to Impact Wrestling, and an even more phenomenal match put on by Speedball and Billy the Goat. This match had no excuse to be as tremendous as it was. After already having a match of the year candidate in last year's G1 Climax, it wasn't entirely crazy to imagine him topping it, but somehow at the same time hard to believe. But Will Ospreay and Tetsuya Naito were still able to make the meeting of the minds as fresh and as action intensified as it was the first time they met. Every sequence was gripping, and every near fall was nail biting. Although the ending became intense when Osprey landed a powerful hoof kick that legitimately knocked out Naito, forcing Osprey to carry him through the closing minutes of the match, it doesn't diminish the exceptional final stretch of the contest. This truly epitomizes the essence of what a New Japan main event is all about. Brian Danielson and Zack Sabre Jr. brought AEW back to its roots of what wrestling was always meant to be. Men struggling for power through physical strength tests, grapples, and submissions. This was done to near perfection. You are watching two masters at work. That's really the best way to describe this match. The greatest match you likely haven't heard of all year. Pro Wrestling Noah is a wrestling promotion that often goes under the radar to most wrestling fans. Though arguable, I believe it still has some of the best wrestling on the planet. And if you need an example of that, take Katsuhiko Nakajima versus Kento Miyahara for instance. A match crafted by two men bearing different company flags, bringing their own unique flavors of wrestling to the table. Nakajima defending his home turf and kicking the living shit out of Miyahara with his devastating shoot kicks, while Miyahara puts Nakajima through the ringer with flying knees and high angle suplexes. There was never a clear winner in the early going, middle, or near the end. The last fall was anybody's game, and by the end, I felt I had just watched an all-time pure classic. Truly outstanding. From Hangman stapling his kid's hand-drawn pictures onto Swerve's head, to busting Swerve open and letting the blood pour into his mouth before spitting it into the air in what is to this day the grossest act of violence I have seen in a wrestling match, this was nasty. But despite its grotesque nature, I couldn't look away from it. Every spot felt like an attempt at one-upping the next. This match tells the tale of Hangman seeking to destroy Swerve and Strickland looking to bring the best out of Hangman and exploiting him at his worst. Side of Swerve Strickland giving himself an adrenaline rush by using that same staple gun used earlier in the match on him and stapling his own chest as he stares Hangman deep into his eyes, taunting him and outright welcoming more destruction might be the coldest shit I have seen all year. This match is like a horror movie. You came for the thrills and you came for the blood, and in many ways, it over delivers. The highest rated match of the year. Some are even calling it the greatest of all time. Which may shock a lot of you to see this match at number 5 on the list. And while I do believe there are 4 matches better, let's talk about why it is considered the greatest of all time. From beginning to end, this match tells a beautiful story. Kenny Omega re-entering the Tokyo Dome in the heel role of the cleaner, while Will Ospreay emerges with his old theme song Elevated as a more seasoned version of the aerial assassin. It was a dream match. The tone was set at a gradual pace, taking their time to walk the audience through every beat and every breathtaking spot executed by either man. If Omega gained control, best belief Osprey was on his tail. If Osprey had the advantage, you knew a Kenny Omega comeback was on the horizon. Creating an atmosphere for an intense final 10 minute stretch, a closure that culminated in what will be held in the holy grail of professional wrestling matches. Will Ospreay vs Kenny Omega is peak professional wrestling, but I can't give this all the praise. We still have four more to go.
Gunther vs. Sheamus vs. Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania 39 is without question WWE's greatest match of the year. Whenever two men of equal playing ground fight it out, it always draws in a crowd. But when you throw a third into the mix, it can either add or subtract from the overall aspect of the true fight. But Drew's inclusion in this rematch between Sheamus and Gunther only amplify all the gunshots that were chops from Gunther, headbutts from Drew, or lariats from Sheamus. A battle amongst three nations. The finish of Sheamus attempting to pin Drew McIntyre, only to be interrupted by a top rope Gunther flying into frame and splashing both men, then quickly following it up by powerbombing Sheamus onto Drew, then lifting Drew up to powerbomb him a final time for the pin will never leave my head for as long as I live. This match is many things, a symphony of strikes, a ballet of blows, a heavyweight sonata, and match of the year is one of them. MJF and Brian Danielson at the beginning of 2023 put together what I believe is the single greatest Iron Man match of all time. MJF and Brian duking it out for the first 25 minutes before Brian gets the first fall. MJF, seeing an opportunity to keep the even playing field, executes the smartest tactic I have ever seen in a multiple fall match. He dishes a low blow and giving Brian the 2-0 lead. He then uses the vulnerability of Brian to roll him up and get the pinfall for the two and one. Rather than gloat or hesitate, he immediately goes for the pin again and is successful in achieving a two and two record within a 10 second time slot. It was an insanely clever sequence, only that could be executed in that manner by MJF. This really sets the tone for the latter half of the match, who will end the 30 minutes with a victory. And even down to a sudden death, both men kept it captivating, even closing in at 70 minutes. Excellence personified. Listen, I know you heard me gas up Kenny Omega versus Will Ospreay 1. So now all you have to do is switch the roles. Kenny Omega being the babyface and Will Ospreay being the villain. Throw in some dangerous neck spots and a bit of a faster paced AEW flavoring packet on top of this match and you have their second match. It's honestly not entirely different from the first outside of a handful of different spots and pacing. It mainly comes down to personal preference when selecting which match you think is subjectively the best. And I believe it's their forbidden door skirmish. The energy this match carried not only rivals, but I would argue tops their first match. Amongst the greatest of the year, but not the greatest. That's reserved for... Imagine watching three full-length matches in one sitting. That is FTR versus Jay White and Juice Robinson. It is a total combination of different and varying contests paired into one total pinnacle of excellence. The structure of this match is exceptional with everyone remembering their spots from earlier in the match that come into play later, whether it be a learned counter or playing into the finish. All four men in this match play to each other's strengths and weaknesses bringing out the best in one another. Tag team wrestling at its absolute peak form. The use of tags not only to avenge and save your partner, but to strategically mess with the flow of the tag team sequence is unlike any other. The pacing of this 58 minute long tag team match that not only keeps the viewer intrigued, but entices them the longer it goes is truly awe inspiring. An incredible use of the one hour time slot that in my opinion, not only is match of the year, but one of the greatest tag team matches of all time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my top 25 matches of 2023. What did you think of the list? What would you put as number one? What does your list look like? Comment down below. Let me know. Thank you guys for watching. Happy New Year. I will see you all in 2024. Peace.